Hi everyone, I'm Charlene Habermeyer of Good Parenting Brighter Children, and this is Tidbits of Wisdom for Parents. Yesterday we talked about our three brains, the brain in the head which handles our intellectual functions, the brain in the heart which is, handles our intuition and our conscience, and the brain in the gut that handles our emotions. So the question that I posed at the end of that was, how do we develop these other two brains, the one in our gut and the one in our heart? We know pretty much there's tons and tons of books written out there about how we develop a child's intellect. But knowing how important the emotions are and they're a child's conscience, which has to do with their character, the way they behave and so forth, how do we develop those things? Now that has been a question that I've been asking actually since 1991 when I started reading about all of these three brains. And I thought, okay, I know how to develop a child's, my children's intellect, but how do I help them with their emotions and with their intuition? Now, this is my own opinion, but I feel like the very things that you do with your child to develop their intellect are the very things that also help their emotions and help their character and their intuition. Let me give you some examples. First of all, as you know, I am big, I'm a huge advocate on the importance of reading daily to your children. When you choose books for your children to read, you're choosing them a gamut of different types of books out there. And so as you read those books, usually every single book out there will teach them some kind of lesson in some way. Now there's a group of books called the Berenstein Bears. Those books are very obvious in what they're teaching, like sharing or being selfish or a new baby coming in or going to the doctors or going to the dentist. Okay. They cover a lot of very, you know, they're not, um, they're not, um, subtle in what they're teaching a child. They're very obvious. They're very overt. Okay. So I had a son who loved those books and we read them all the time, <clears throat> but to me, they lack the quality of getting the child to think about why they loved a certain book and why they wanted that book read over and over to them because I think that it helped them with whatever that they were uh, thinking about or struggling about in their lives. Let me give you another example. One book that I love is A Pig is Moving In. If you were teaching your children about the importance of diversity, the importance of getting away from racism and bigotry and all of this, this is a great book to read to them. Why? Because it's about a pig and a pig is moving into an apartment building. And of course the pig in society is stereotyped as somebody who's dirty and awful and wallows in the mire, who's lazy and everything else. So you have all these different animals that are very concerned about this pig moving in because heaven forbid, they all have this stereotyped idea of what a pig is. Now, the interesting thing that you want to remember is that in literature, in children's literature, oftentimes you, times you have animals. They're called children in little fur coats. Why? Because it's a lot less threatening for a child to see an animal do these things than it is for an actual child in the book. Okay, so when you're reading this book to your child, you can end up by asking them questions because what happens is all the stereotypes of, of what a pig is are completely blown out of the water. This pig is industrious, this pig is clean, this pig is a friend, this pig is a good person, this pig is kind, this pig is generous and has all of those wonderful qualities that we all want to have and we want our children to have. So when you're picking books to read to your children, as you read them, you're going to pick up the subtle lessons found in those books and then ask your children. And as you're doing that, and the more you read to them and the more lessons that you're deriving from those books, and sometimes it's just sheer pleasure, but usually there's always some kind of a lesson when you're uh, reading to a child. The other thing that I think is extremely important is when we talked about date nights. Okay, when you go on your, and I gave all the how to do date nights with a child and everything. When you go on a date night, it's pretty much you want to keep it fun and games. You want to keep it lighthearted. You want to build this strong relationship. But what it says to the child and how it builds their emotions is that it's saying to the child, you as a parent are willing in a horribly busy schedule that you have, you are willing to take time for them, to take them out someplace, to go and do something with them. That speaks volumes to a child. We also talked about weekly interviews with a child. And I, I gave you the structure of how we did them in our house. Those are times when you actually are talking to the child about their behavior. If they did something wrong during the week, you're able to talk to them about it. You're able to do conflict resolution. You're able to find, you know, different things, uh, different ways of doing things. If they didn't uh, do their homework, for instance, the consequences involved in that. 
um, if they were mean to people, if they bullied people or whatever, you were able to address these things in these interviews each week. By addressing them, you are definitely honing in on their emotional development and their, and their character development, their conscience of knowing and understanding right from wrong. So that too is another important thing to do. <clears throat> um, also, dinner with your kids. All right, I know that everyone is horribly busy nowadays, but plan at least one meal that you are going to have together as a family. Because again, that allows you to listen to your kids, all of their activities and the things that happened with their day, and you're able to respond to them. You're able to ask them more questions and get into the heart of the matter. The other thing is you want to be able to see what kinds of friends they have. And I'm going to talk more about this, but we did an activity that was very powerful that helped me to get to know their friends. And uh, it's something that you can do. We had uh, parties every Friday night. Once our kids hit middle school, junior high school, have a party, a simple little party so that you can get to know their friends. And so then you can see how they're interacting with their friends. Let me give you a, uh, a couple of things. This book is wonderful. This was actually written in 1998. I liked you at 10. I'll like you again. In the beginning of the book, the mother gives this um, creed to her children, something that she promises them. She says, my beloved gift this child sent to me, the lessons I teach you will affect what you'll be. I'll acquaint you and guide you and show you the way. You were my sunbeam, my golden ray. So she goes through every single year from birth to age 21, and then she gives them additional little insights of things that she wants to do for the child and what she wants to teach them and how she wants them to grow into these emotionally stable children that are happy and are productive and who are successful. Now, let me leave you with one powerful bonus fact that we found in our family helped, uh, helped a ton to develop their emotions and their, um, their caring about other people, all of the value systems that we wanted them to have, and that was service projects. And I've already talked to you about service projects. I told you about this book, Beatrice's Goat, and about all the Heifer International program. I have told you about different things that you can do on the 12 days of Christmas and how you can have that tradition. I'm also going to be telling you other ideas on different service things and different service projects. But this is what we found. As we had service projects on a regular basis in our home, we noticed that our children were more kind, they were more compassionate, they were more empathetic, they had all of those qualities that we wanted them to have. Those are character qualities. But also, what we found is when they were, when they were having a tough day and their emotions were at an all-time high, they were depressed, they were sad, they were anxious, angry, whatever the emotion was, we found that Getting involved in just a simple service project, like making a batch of cookies, and yes, eating part of them, but wrapping them up and taking them to a few neighbors, it just lifted their spirits. So there's something very powerful in engaging your child in service that will help them develop these other two hearts, the one in our, our, the brain in our heart and the brain in our gut. So those give you some other ideas. Um, please comment in the section of different things that you've done as a family with your children that you feel have really helped their emotional development. Again, if you would like to subscribe to my channel, you can click the button below. And also a little bell will come up if you click that button that will give you the notifications of every time I post something new. Thank you for joining me. I hope this has been interesting for you and I'll see you tomorrow.